Good afternoon. Thank you so much for the invitation, David, and uh, for the support and your team for organizing this. Um, uh, so I had, I was under the impression that I have half an hour, but I realized that I have only 15 minutes. So I'm going to go through a lot of the slides. So um, this project was funded by NEFA, uh, AFI NEFA, and uh, it was the, um, uh, it was done by a former um, PhD student of mine. Uh, she's working for Pairwise, uh, or Pairwise people are left, I think. Um, but anyway, I'm going to present her thesis. Um, so um, just a little bit where we are. Uh, we are in North Carolina State University. We are located in North Carolina. And uh, we have, uh, let me go here, choose the printer. There you go. So uh, here is where our main campus is in Raleigh. And then I have two uh, stations uh, that run the experiments, one in Castle Hain in down the coast, and then one in Sand Hills. We're going to hear about Sand Hills today a lot. And then the third station that we don't do much is uh, near Canapolis campus. And here is where we are located in the map of the United States. If you are not from the United States, so you have an idea of where we are. So we are currently here, and we are across the country here. So Blueberry, North Carolina, it's a $67 million um, uh, farm gate value of the crop. Uh, it has, uh, uh, each year, uh, we produce about 46 million pounds. Um, North Carolina ranks six or seven um, in the nation for production of blueberries. There are about 10,000 acres of blueberries in North Carolina. And, um, um, we produce about 8% of the nation, and there are more than 100 uh, operations of North Carolina, uh, blueberry production in North Carolina. So you have heard about blueberry a lot today and yesterday, um, so um, I'm just going to summarize this real quick. Um, blueberry uh, genomics, uh, 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 blueberry is a very complex uh, plant. Uh, it has, uh, it belongs to Ericales, um family uh, or Ericaceae family, and uh, the genus is called vaccinium. It has nothing to do with, with vaccine or vaccinum, which is cow, so I don't know, they call it vaccinium. Uh, it has 22 sections, and within each section we have the species, so it is, um, you can see how uh, complex it is, and uh, one of the most famous uh, sections is Cyanococcus, uh, which has most of the blueberries that you eat is from this section. Uh, within this section, there are uh, several species, including Garawai, Carambosum, Anglocephalium, and Birgatum. Uh, Carambosum and Birgatum are the most um, uh, popular ones. Uh, the one that you buy from the market uh, is most likely Carambosum, uh, but sometimes you get uh, Birgatum into your clamshell that you probably don't notice. Um, I'm the third breeder in, uh, at NC State, um, so the early uh, work started with Jean Galetta in 30s, and then Dr. Ballington uh, took over that program in 50s, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, in 70s, and then I recently joined NC State eight, seven years ago. So I inherited a mess of genome, genetics and genomics material here. As you can see, this is a pedigree of four um, sessions here. See how complex it is. So these gentlemen included a lot of uh, wild species into our germplasm. So uh, our goal was to um, to tease this apart and see how we can uh, find um, the locations of these interrogations into our current material. So we heard today about the segmental allopolyphenols, and this is a good example of that. So within this uh, graph, you see, you see diploid, hexaploid, hepaploid, everything. Um, <clears throat> so my goal was to develop genomic uh, genetic markers for blueberry. And uh, so when I joined NC State, we only had a few SSR markers. Um, and uh, so the goal was to develop these markers for blueberry for the first time. So the goal of this project was to have uh, geno uh, genetic markers for phylogenetic studies, uh, trait identification, gene mapping, DNA fingerprinting, parental testing, QTL discovery, and marker assisted selection, or in future, genomic selection. So to do that, uh, uh, this uh, project was uh, led by Elishiva Young. Uh, she is uh, an employee of Pairwise right now. 
And uh, so we decided to uh, resequence 29 uh, genotypes of blueberry from different species. So these are the list of the, all the species and the genotypes that we sequenced, we resequenced, and then we identify SNPs among um, all of these. So these are the diversity of these and where they are, um, where they came from, uh, different parts of the country. Uh, so to develop the, uh, the markers, the SNP markers, as you know, you just resequence, you map it to a reference. Um, at that time, I think we didn't have a reference. Um, it, there was not a good reference available, but we had a um, diploid genome that we assembled with PacBio. So we map all the reads to that diploid genome. It was another scale, uh, at chromosome scale, uh, we are back in 2015 and still we are early stages of developing this uh, material. So, um, so anyway, we had something to stick these reads to it and then call the SNPs. Uh, we, uh, we identified over 20 million um, SNPs and we filtered them based on the depth and, and quality. So we ended up having 1.7 million SNPs. Uh, some of these SNPs have been validated by three companies and they are using it for, um, so Europeans and Agbiotech and another company in Europe, they are using these uh, markers that I have developed. And uh, so they are using it for uh, two to five or um, anyway, parental identifications and whatnot. Um, some of them are uh, segregating in the CAS assays pretty nicely, like five clusters. Some of them like, uh, exhibit like, uh, Deployed. So like simple markers. Mm -hmm. So we use these markers to develop a tree of uh, uh, a phylogeny tree for all the species that we sequence. So the impact of this work is to shorten the, you know, eventually shorten the breeding process. It takes 15 years to 20 years to develop a blueberry. So if we can do the early generation selection, we can probably eliminate a few years and maybe narrow it down to 11 years. So um, the second part of the project was a GWAS. Uh, so after developing these markers, we said, okay, let's use them uh, for a, a capture sequencing project or genome-wide uh, genome, um, uh, genome association mapping. So before we do that, we, um, we selected the, um, the diversity panel. So we had about 280 individuals. Uh, some of them, uh, most of them were from our station, our material that was developed by the previous leaders. And uh, we selected 80 genotypes from Corvallis uh, repository. So in order to know who is, you know, the fluidity level, the first thing that we did was flow cytometry. For flow cytometry, as you know, you just uh, extract the, you know, the, the nuclei from the leaf or um, flower buds, and then you run it through the flow cytometer to uh, identify or discover or um, measure the uh, DNA content. So for this project, we use flower buds. It tends to be the best uh, tissue to do the flow cytometry. And then we use PI. So PI is better than um, other uh, dyes or, uh, or it's more accurate to, um, to measure the polyvity level and also the DNA content. So this is just an example of um, the results. So the, uh, this section, uh, Herpotamus, uh, was the smallest genomes it had the smallest genome, Flaxinium, had the largest genome in the in the uh, in the section uh, level. At the species level, um, Crassifolium and Ovalifolium had the smallest genome size, and Angustifolium, which is uh, main uh, blueberry types like low bush blueberries, Tetrapoloid, and Cesariense and Oligonosum, uh, Unosum, they had the largest um, genomes. So then uh, within the um, the diversity panel, we identified, um, you know, a lot of things, including the diploids, triploids, tetraploids, pentaploids, and hexaploids. So the, our goal was to eliminate everything that is pentaploid and hexaploid and uh, tetraploid and diploid and just keep the tetraploids for the GWAS analysis. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the result of this work has been published recently uh, in uh, science here for culture and um, so we identified the uh, 190 tetraploids that we use for um, the GWAS study. Um, for the GWAS, um, as I said, we had 190 and then we had other uh, genotypes in there. So overall we had 210 genotypes. 
uh, with the replicates, with some technical replicates in there. Uh, we had also, we threw this uh, in the plate, we threw also these genomes, um, these species to see what they, uh, what we get from the genotyping by sequencing. So the phenotyping was done in two locations, Corvallis and uh, uh, for the Corvallis material that we have 80 uh, genotypes and then in uh, uh, North Carolina State also. Five genotypes were common between the two, so we decided to do a GYE study, and then that uh, was published last year, two years ago, in the agronomy. So for the field collection, um, so um, earlier in the morning you heard about all the traits that you, um, we had another blueberry particle here. So these are exactly the same, um, the same uh, traits that we measured as um, they measured uh, Firmness, food size, pH, soluble solids. And we measured the firmness between instruments with, um, uh, with a FemTech 2 and also a texture analyzer machine. So for genotyping, we use uh, TCAN, um, TCAN uh, it, currently it's called, it was Allegro, but now it is called TCAN Genomics um, Allegro. So we use the sequence capture by that, uh, that Allegro kit. Uh, so we chose, uh, from 1.7 million SNPs that we had, we chose 60,000, which were in the genic regions. And then from that uh, list, we designed about 118K uh, probes. So in, within each SNP, we put two probes in each side of the SNP. And then we genotype the population, and uh, this is the, you know, the result of the genotyping, and uh, these are the phenotyping, so eventually we, the goal was to do the GWAS. Uh, this is the phenotypic variations within the population. And um, so we did uh, the principal component analysis. And as you can see, uh, fruit weight uh, had uh, fruit weight, uh, polar diameter, uh, equilateral, equilateral, equilateral. Um, so uh, longitudinal uh, diameter and uh, length. Uh, or LAB is the color of the fruit. And the titratable acidity, they had the highest uh, principal component. I have one more minute um, and, uh, and a lot of the slides, but uh, so to do that, uh, we, we genotype uh, uh, all of these individuals through the filtering. Uh, we identified uh, 14 million variant positions. We filter them based on the uh, missing data and the depth of the, the reads. And then we ended up having 31,000 variable sites from that 60,000 that we uh, originally did want to target. So basically we, um, captured, uh, we captured half or most of the, the fragments that we wanted, but we selected 31,000 SNPs. Um, so this is the structure analysis, the results of the structure and the K values. Um, and then we uh, ran the Ivana analysis to, to find the best K for our population. And K4 was you not know, to be the best um, K for uh, choosing that. Uh, for the structure of this diversity panel. Uh, we did the phylogeny of all the genotypes, um, and then we put the phylogeny on the structure to see how they match up. Uh, um, so this is a kind of screenshots of how the trees look like, you know, when you do the, so our reference was only when you map the onion to onion, you don't see much of variation. But we did others. Uh, I put this just an example to show you how the data, how the data look like in, on um, IGB. Also, this is another type, you know, visualization. If you want to see how big is the mess, is like here, and uh, so you, there's a lot of challenge to deal with this data. So we use G GWAS Poly uh, that's developed by Jeff and. Uh, so we had a lot of challenge with GWAS poly to see which model we have to use and for each trait, because if, when you look at the chromosomes, some models are working better for some of the traits and some models are not working good for you know, other traits. So it's kind of a challenge to use that. So I need to talk to Jeff about that. I think Lauren also talked to him. Uh, we identified uh, more uh, SNPs or associations with the colors. And that's probably because of the nature of this, uh, this trait. Uh, we found a few markers for firmness. Um, we, as I said, we measured firmness with other uh, devices and it didn't pass the threshold. So um, maybe a few markers here, a few here. 
So what we are going to do next is to reanalyze this data with, a, uh, with another reference because we translated positions from one reference to another reference. And I think that's the, the problem here that we had. Um, but I just wanted to share with you the challenges that uh, you're gonna encounter with this type of data. Uh, this is titratable acidity, uh, titratable acidity, pH, and soluble solids. Not too many uh, SNPs identified. Also, uh, within the years, and um, these are uh, other traits that we, uh, we ran. So these are like um, days to, uh, to first operate, days to first bloom, and um, these are the phenotypic traits for the blooming. And uh, one of the, the things that is important to know is just this uh, titratable acidity. Uh, from year to year, from harvest to harvest, you get different SNPs. But uh, one thing that was consistent was for this trade was in harvest two, and the average of all the total soluble solids was consistent between the two years and two, um, two replications. Overall, uh, the, uh, the key results quantitatively characterize a large range of fruit and phenolog uh, phenologic and phenotypic characterizations. We identified two in one unique significant trait associated with SNPs. Uh, so, fruit trait one, uh, color um, three, eight, one, and for fairness, one. So, as you can see, there is not many SNPs that we identified. Uh, mm, but we identified hundreds of uh, putative genes under one of those. So it's, a, it's interesting to know that that region is covering a lot of genes. Uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, you, thank you. And uh, also thank my, uh, the funder, founders of this uh, project, uh, USDA and NEPA, NSF and Blueberry Growers at North Carolina, at NC, uh, North Carolina and my team who uh, worked with me during the past seven years to to generate all of this data and uh, they are a uh, great team, especially Nahla Basir, who is not here uh, from NUSA and Amanda Halston, they were collaborators in this project.